Hi everyone. Um, so I just wanted to answer this question uh, by Jeff, who uh, said that um, I've seen multiple sources state that the New Zealand dollar is no longer a buy due to them pausing future rate hikes. However, out of the currencies that we trade, it is still <clears throat> a higher interest rate than the Swiss, the Euro, the Yen and the Australian dollar. Wouldn't the New Zealand dollar be a good buy against currencies with lower interest rates, even if the currencies with lower interest rates were hypothetically still looking to hike, such as the Swiss franc, the Euro, the Yen and the Australian dollar? For instance, if the Swiss franc hiked from 1.5, <clears throat> it would still be much lower than New Zealand's 4.25. Uh, I understand that China and risk sentiment would play a role in this, uh, but it's just general, absolutely. So it's a very uh, logical question and uh, something that definitely makes a lot of sense. But um, there are things that we need to consider um, when it comes to um, uh, interest rates. And this is something what I would call more of a uh, interest rate convergence uh, idea. So ultimately, you know, if we saw, for example, a bank offering, you know, 4.25%, let's say a high street bank, um, and compared to one that was uh, offering, um, you know, 1.5% on, on your interest on, on depositing your money in their bank, you would always go for the higher one, right? But in, in with currencies and Forex, it's slightly different in terms of um, how we would trade and where we would, you know, place our money. And so... Um, let me explain, right? So we've got interest rate uh, convergence and divergences. And um, one of the things we need to uh, obviously just keep um, keep in mind that rate hikes typically equal demand, right? Not all the time. It's not 100% of the time. There are times, you know, where we get a, a dovish hike, for example. Um, but if, if we look at it as a rule of thumb that rate hikes typically uh, will equal demand for that currency. So... Um, if that's the case, let's say we had a, a graph chart of um, interest rates, right? And for example, this was, um, you know, 4.25, or just say, let's just say 4%, and this was, say, for example, 1%, yeah, on the graph, and this is interest rates. <clears throat> um, and the New Zealand dollar, yeah, is is holding rates at a level of four percent. In fact, I'll just draw that as a as an arrow. Now, if the central bank, if another central bank like the Swiss franc are actually looking to hike rates slowly, yeah, and start to increase their rate hikes, if we consider that rate hikes um, typically mean there's more demand. Yeah, um, then that has to be priced in to the value of that exchange rate. And so on the New Zealand dollar Swiss, what you would actually see, if we had another chart right here, in fact, I'll just draw it like this. If we had another chart like this, because the New Zealand dollar is the, uh, the base currency and the Swiss franc is the quote currency, because uh, demand is being created, although be it small, demand but um it's an increase in demand right because higher interest rates causes um you know money to flow into that uh, that currency even though it's below the four percent but it will create demand because you're getting more um uh, more of a return obviously for your uh, for depositing and, and holding that uh, currency what would happen on new zealand swiss uh, would be uh, actually something that looks like this right a downtrend yeah, because <clears throat> the um, because of the demand for the quote currency, right? The second currency. If we're doing it like this, so New Zealand, Swiss. And if you're buying in New Zealand, then you would, and you think the New Zealand's going to go higher than the Swiss franc, then you would see uh, prices do something like this, right? The opposite. But if you're buying the quote currency, expecting the quote currency to increase, then that's basically what we're what we're looking at anyways um so that's really what's happening so what's happening is is more of a convergence between um you know the the higher interest rate <clears throat> and the 
um, the one percent where that's going to one point five to two to two point five to three to three point five to four, and also as well, it's about really the hiking cycle. And as we know, uh, central banks typically don't when they start to hike, they don't necessarily hike once, right? They hike in cycles, and they can hike for you know for a year or two, depending on obviously inflation um, and what's happening in the economy. And so, although logically, yes, you would say, well, I'd still have my money in uh, the 4%, the higher rate, rather than the 1%, as um, this starts to go higher, yeah, demand starts to increase for the for the higher interest rate on the lower interest rate uh, currency, and that increases the demand for that currency, which should reflect in a... Um, uh, in the market pricing in what the exchange rate for the New Zealand uh, Swiss franc or you know any currency uh, would be yeah um, and so uh, yeah the market is always pricing in value yeah and so um, yeah that's really what we have to look towards in terms of you know staying ahead of the curve um, and also as well the market is always forward-looking and again you always you said that um, that for example you know nothing is necessarily just black and white in terms of interest rate uh you know convergences and divergences you know we also have to think about uh risk on and risk off right in the risk on environment the new zealand dollar would uh hands down win over the swiss franc and in a risk off environment the swiss franc um would be the flight to safety in the um um, you know the uh, safe haven currency and that would also strengthen the uh, the Swiss franc over the uh, New Zealand dollar but ultimately um, when it comes to interest rates it's more about the cycle and where they are in the cycle than it is in comparison to um, the actual uh, number and how high to how low um, uh, the um, uh, the interest rate actually is and so um, so yeah that's pretty much uh, the simple explanation right and it works the other way in terms of in terms of cutting rates um, you know cutting rates would be more uh, supply so if you had a central bank uh, that had for example a uh, a lower interest rate and in fact let me just uh, clear the screen So let's do the opposite. So if you had, again, a, a central bank that had 1% and you had 4% up top, and the bank with the 4%, actually the bank with the 1% was holding rates, but you had the bank uh, with the 4%, sorry, looking to uh, cut rates, yeah, you would actually still want to buy the currency that is um, that is stable, and it's because, in fact, the um, as they're cutting rates, the um, and going towards that one percent again, this has to be revalued lower. The value of that currency is being revalued lower, and so that would uh, cause, in fact, you to actually want to buy the. 1% and actually start to short the 4% because the value of that 4% is no longer going to be present. Traders are going to look to probably just start to get out of that trade and this has to be revalued uh, a lot lower. So um, yeah, it works slightly uh, opposite to how we would expect it to, but that's basically you know the logic behind it. So I uh, hope that clears uh, clears this up I did make in fact I did make a video on this and I've made several videos on this over the years but I just couldn't find it in the um, in the trading videos channel and I I guess I've got to do the search terms a bit more specific um, when it comes to because I've got I think like thousands of videos in here uh, years worth of videos in here as well so um, but yeah so uh, hopefully that helps if you do have any uh, further questions and I'm just hoping I'm reading back and hopefully that I have answered this uh, correctly and uh, in terms of uh, fully and so yeah I think I have and so yeah that's really the answer so I hope that helps 
Take care, and if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to put it in the questions for group call channel.